Welcome back to the homestead, guys. Today, we're gonna come in here and we're gonna chop up every single one of these plants into little pieces so we can start incorporating this into the soil. So I'm gonna get started over here. <laughs> uh... <laughs> what are you using, a little boy's <laughs> toy right there? <laughs> it's the Mono Showdown! <laughs> What's going on guys? We are chopping and dropping even further. You remember last time we chopped and dropped with the machetes, the machete boys are in town. Well now the Modown Showdown boys are in town because what we wanna do is level this all out. And we also have a big pile of compost because we're finally gonna be building a compost bin here at the homestead. Right. We wanna break up all this compost. So right now it's just time to mow all this down. Maybe we'll take turns, Jacques. Let's get to it. I'll get started over here. <laughs> <laughs> One of the biggest reasons we're doing this is to get more surface area of this organic matter, break it up as much as we humanly can because when we eventually do build out the compost bins, we'll be layering in browns and greens, carbon and nitrogen, and the more surface area there is, as long as it doesn't mat together like crazy, exactly. the quicker we're gonna be able to make epic compost. Look at that. You wanna hit this guy? It's one of our kabochas from last time. <laughs> Should we just put it under? Give it that chop. Give it that chop chop. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Let's try the compost. It's chopping. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> what is that, a, a sheep? <laughs> There's like a bunch of wool in the ground here. The initial uh, mow over is done. I think what we might do is bump this down a height level and maybe hit it again. Honestly, dude, I think a lot of this stuff here, a little too I'm, thick. I don't feel too comfortable with just a basic little lawnmower hitting that. So I think we should probably save that for, maybe we throw it through the chipper shredder when we bring out the real big gun chipper. Yeah. Um, and build the compost pile. But guys, today it's just getting this material broken down to size. Eventually we're gonna grab a tiller, we're gonna get a big load of compost, yep. put it here, spread it out, till it all in, and level this whole area out. Because what we really want is a huge watermelon, cantaloupe, corn, just Man. a smorgasbord of nonsense here, but it's just not in a condition that we could actually confidently plant that stuff out right now. So Bobka's doing some hunting. Maybe we'll let this be for a sec. Yeah. And actually the next thing we wanna do is finally plant out some beds over in the back garden. Let's do it. Okay, we're over here. As you can see, there's like four, actually five backyard beds that we haven't planted out. Yeah. So what do you got? I think we got some uh, Japanese holus corn. So this is a popcorn. That's right? a popcorn. That's a popcorn. I've never grown popcorn. I think I'm gonna basically come in like this. Yeah. And then, you know, just do the classic. And pull away. And just kind hey, of guess what in. I'm gonna do, Jacques? <laughs> I use your hands or? <laughs> <laughs> it's called being one with nature. We just come in really quickly here. Why don't you pop me one of those real quick? Perfect. Oh, ooh, that's a little sharp. Out. <laughs> Honestly, it looks these like it's working. are fun, but completely pointless. <laughs> fun, but pointless. We're gonna do a video pretty soon on dumb gardening tools. They might be your new say, favorite. I don't like I them. Think no, like I don't them. like them, I don't like them. Ooh, Off come the cat gloves. Maybe I should switch over to those. We learned last year actually that corn doesn't really want to be transplanted that That's much. True. And so let's just not disturb it more than we already are. Yeah, we could snip one off if we decide. And remember Jacques, last year we, we learned that we should probably transplant a little deeper. Oh yeah, you're right. Because of that wind issue. Let's go ahead and push that in a so bit. So we'll go in a little bit deeper on these. Yeah, so what we found is that you can transplant corn totally fine, but it might expose, like the roots will become exposed over time as you water. Yeah. And then it becomes kind of floppy. Yep, exactly. So going so a little bit deep. In. Is this the same bed where I, I slapped you with the corn stalk? I think that was. <laughs> I think it was. I don't know if I ever apologized. You and didn't. I don't know if I ever will, actually. <laughs> I was say. Someone said I hired you just so I had someone to roast. <laughs> Let's just say it goes both ways. One's off camera, one's a little more off camera over here. <laughs> trying to keep it professional. Yeah, yeah. He's trying to get a good performance review. When you're applying the straw, especially on corn, you don't have to stress much about potentially burying it. It's pretty vigorous, it's a grass after all. It's gonna come right back up. 
like what you're doing, watering it is gonna really help it secure it to the bed. Yep. It's not gonna go anywhere after that. Yeah, you would be surprised. You would think this shredded straw would blow all over the place once this dries out. It really never does. And it never does. It never does. And we've actually had, I would say, 15, 20 mile an hour winds through. Actually, I got a 30, 30 mile power. You got a gust. gust and it just doesn't. It, it's surprising. I think it's because it's shredded so much. It kind of yeah. just has that lignin stickiness inside. So we're in here with corn. We're going to move up to the front, put at least a couple peppers in. But behind us on a future episode, we're going to harvest out these leeks and garlic. And that's really where the bulk of the tomatoes and peppers are going to go for the summer. So up here in the front, what we're going to actually do is direct seed some squashes. Yep. So we have um, Ron Denai squash, prolific straight neck squash, and the white scallop bush. These are all from San Diego seed. And we have one other that's a gray zucchini, kind of like a Lebanese style. So I'm thinking maybe four squash plants here. We have two yellow Pekin peppers. These are kind of a rare pepper. And we're gonna just dot them in the back corner is what we're thinking. Yeah. So I'm gonna go in with some of these seeds. And then- We always have these kind of weird planting combinations just because it's whatever we have on hand. Yeah. And why not? Why not? <laughs> There's nothing It's worked it. every year so far. Yeah. So there's nothing wrong with it. So I'm just kind of trying to prehydrate this a little bit because obviously it's been a bit since we planted in here. And you know me, Jacques, I like a level bed. <laughs> you really do. Yeah, you'd be surprised when you have some compost as a topper, how long it takes to actually properly hydrate that compost if it does dry out. Yeah, it that's takes, the real key. It takes a while, so so make sure we got that going here. Looks really good, though. Yeah. These beds look really healthy. Tons of worms deep in there, too. Should have worn the uh, cat claws for that <laughs> job right there. <laughs> Maybe we'll do a little pepper Sunflower, sunflower, pepper. Oh yeah, yeah, let me go grab some sunflowers. All right, so in with a queen lime, orange, and a Q QLZ blush. How, how deep did you go in the pepper? Did you go a little deeper than normal? Or? I kind of just kept the standard height because it looks kind of witty. Yeah. So I don't think it's going to like going deep. Yeah. You can actually root them like a tomato, but only if they're still green. Um, but they're I've not really as forgiving. Success. Yeah. Because tomatoes really don't get woody. Um, no, For ever. the most part but peppers obviously do and much easier to overwinter and, and grow again the next season. I don't know. We always find tons of worms out here. Hey, guess what? I just accidentally stepped on the six cell. Oh, did it and break? And guess what? Oh. It didn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Every time at the end of the season, I'm like over zucchini and summer squash. But then as soon as it's gone, all of a sudden I started craving it, even though I was just giving it away before. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Well, it's just it's just the grass is always greener, basically. That's all <laughs> it's all it really is. So I'm going really laissez-faire here and just throwing <laughs> three seeds down in here. I'm just jamming them straight in. Yep. Okay, we're on to the next bed. I've got the level head rake to level it out. As we know, we want that. <laughs> uh, also, we put some compost on here. So again, it's it's about that hydration. This bed again is going to be a bit of a funky twist. We have a couple determinate tomatoes, sweet tangerine hybrid determinates, more of a bushy style. And then I finally, to Jacques' pleasure, will be growing <laughs> some eggplants. Uh, it's not really not my favorite vegetable. You are a big fan, I believe, yeah, right? Yeah, we're gonna teach Kevin to like it this year. Yeah. Might we'll need see. a little recipe from, from Jacques' kitchen over here to, uh, to really get into don't it. Don't worry about it. Yeah. I got a couple. Yeah. All right, well, I'll have to try that this summer. Let's go ahead and get these in the ground. Yeah, let's do it. There we go. I mean, look at that. I mean, looks like a new tomato right there. <laughs> looks like it just popped out. I'm sensing a little bit of. Um, Lack of uh, lack of attention to detail. Over I don't there. know. I think this one just looks better. Do you think so? <laughs> you think so? All right. So that's that. Now we're on to the eggplants. These are Japanese variety, right? Yep. The long uh, style. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So one one little hack is these aren't quite perfectly dry, so I or perfectly wet. So we might want to just hit this with a little water before mm. we pull it out. All right. Let's do it. So you let that soak in, and then I think it's easier to come out. Yeah. With. If they fall apart a little. No big deal. No big deal, yeah. Eggplants of the three plants that are in that family that we typically grow, the tomatoes, the peppers, and the eggplants, it's in that order of what, how much they like heat. Tomatoes like it the least, not that they don't, but they just like it the least. Then peppers and eggplants absolutely love the heat. Yeah. Uh, they crave it. They're so. a true summer crop. Yeah, absolutely true summer crop, much like an okra. Yeah, exactly. What's cool about this is then I can, if I want to, dig it out and uh, overwinter later on. Yeah, it's definitely uh, one of these things people don't realize is you can overwinter eggplants very easily. Yeah. And You've been growing them for three years, haven't you? Yep. Yeah. And I'm already, I already have fruit right now. So that's the advantage. These? A little rinser. <laughs> oh, wow. All right. But the last bed we're going to plant today is yet another interesting combination. 
So I have a Big Max pumpkin, and then I also have a Rainbow Pumpkin, both from San Diego Seeds. These are in the Epic 4-cell, four 4-inch four deep, just to allow some of that root growth yep. going on. What do you got? I've got a Pickling Cucumber. This is in the 4-cell, 3-inch. And so that, what variety is that one? Mofka? We think it's, yeah, Mofka is what we wrote, but <laughs> undecided. I can not find the seed what, packet. What you write and what it actually is sometimes, they don't match. You don't have to talk about it. They don't match. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is build up some sort of bit of a mound, Shock. Oh, okay. I'm going to scrape a, just a little bit, not nothing really that crazy. And I'm going to just do um, a four pack of cukes all the way down. And basically what we we're just talking about is that this tree is going to finish fruiting soon and we could prune off some of this, but we're going to just plant it on this back wall right now. Yep. These could end up being absolutely massive by the end of the year. <laughs> yeah. So we could push them over, over into the wild zone. Yeah. It's so funny. Ever since you pointed it out, I always sniff cucumber transplants. Yeah. Because the roots literally smell like a fresh cut cucumber. They smell exactly like cukes. Now I started sniffing roots ever since you mentioned that. All right, let's mulch it over. This is actually a, a common problem I think we face and everyone else does, is that you're waiting to plant the perfect bed and it's always better to just plant what you have. Yeah. Rather than wait, because then I'm sure everyone's experienced this. You're gonna end up with a, a lot of empty garden plots and a lot of dead plants. This has been a big problem here at the homestead is we were like, oh, like, oh, it's not quite ready. It's not quite ready. It's not and then perfect. a month goes by and it would have been better if we had just planted literally anything at all. Uh, and so just a, you know, we are certainly not immune to this disease of kind of mismanaging a garden. We got one more bed to plant over there, but right now I want to do a final pass with the lawnmower to clear this out. Let me know down in the comments what you want to see growing in this spot. I'm thinking maybe a melon patch. Until next time, good luck in the garden and keep on going.